Well, thank you very much, everybody. I very much appreciate you being here. Thank you. And we, uh, we love this state. It's been a great state for me, and it's been a great state for everybody in this room, I can tell you, Governor, right? And uh, we're here to help. Uh, we're joined today by Governor Greg Abbott, very special man. And he's doing a fantastic job for the state of Texas, and he has from day one. And Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, another friend of mine, and thank you, Dan. Sure. And I watched you the other night on a very important show, and you did incredibly well representing the state. And State Attorney General Ken Paxton, where he's a very aggressive Attorney General, and that's what we like. And uh, you've got some very big ones, including uh, the mail-in ballots, right? That's unsolicited, cool. I call them the unsolicited mail-in ballots, where people are sitting home and they just get hit with mail-in ballots all over the that's place. A good way to put it. Well, I hope you're going to be successful. I think it's actually a very important case, not only here but for the whole country. So I know you're. You're really on top. I think we have about 18 of those cases throughout the country. In Pennsylvania, we have, and North Carolina, we have a lot of them. So let's we'll see. But uh, you're one of the great leaders. Thank you very much, Ken. I appreciate it. A man who's really uh, been there when we need him, and he's uh, he's been incredible for Texas, and he's been my friend, Ted Cruz. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, Thank you welcome. very much. Uh, we spent a lot of time before, and we're working on getting Texas everything they need. We'll bring it back. Thank you. Uh, Congressman Brian Babin. Brian, thank you very much. Sir. A Good. warrior and a really terrific guy. And Randy, where's Randy? Randy, thank you. Randy Weber, Congressman, thank you very much. And uh, we have a couple of people who uh, have been friends of mine, and I won't mention too much, but they got a little shot of uh, COVID. And uh, I understand they're going to be perfect. They're going to be absolutely fine. Uh, I want to say hello to Becky Ames. Becky, thank you very much. You. Beaumont, you're doing good, right? Everything yes, sir, okay? We Were you hit doing. hard? Um, not as hard as we could have been. Yeah, it could have been a lot harder. It could have been a lot harder. That's and great. We're, we're recovering, and we appreciate you being here, Mr. President. Well, thank you very much, Becky. I hear you're doing a great job. And again, we were talking before about the path, and the path could have been much more because the power was incredible. Mm -hmm. Uh, Louisiana took a very, very hard hit, but even Louisiana, if it was over just a little bit yeah. further, it would have been a record-setting hit because the power was record-setting. It was at 185 and 175. It went to, a, to 150, 150 miles an hour when it hit, but it was even worse than that. And it came quickly. It came very quickly. It came, uh, in fact, I guess uh, you would say, Pete, they were looking at that as a storm. And all of a sudden, the storm became a monster. So 36 hours, Cat 4. Yeah. Uh, it went from a storm to 185 and 175 miles an hour. And then when it hit, it was, and I think they say it was the most, uh, the strongest that they've had in Louisiana and Texas in 150 years. But the path was a little bit lucky. So right. we got a little bit lucky. So that's great. I want to also uh, introduce. Uh, Chad Wolf, who, as you know, we just took the acting away from his name, and you're doing a fantastic job, Homeland Security. And uh, hopefully, uh, Ted will be pushing that very hard, and we'll get him through quickly, because he's done a fantastic Thank job. You, sir. Thank you very much, Chad. He'll get confirmed. He'll, he'll do it, all right? Yeah, we'll get it done. Good. He, if he says it, that means uh, that's a good <laughs> sign. That's a good sign. And uh, FEMA Administrator <clears throat> Pete Gaynor, who's been doing this with me for a long time, and we haven't had a loss yet. We haven't had a... A loser, I'll tell you, we do it good, and we do it fast, and we get you back up. And everything, I think, uh, Governor, has been signed, and you're ready to go, right? Yes, yes. You're ready to go. I will dispense with all of the uh, different numbers. You know what they are. We just sort of did it. We were in Louisiana, and we went through, and they have been hit hard. They, uh, we went through a couple of areas. I, I've never seen anything quite like it. You had trees ripped out from the roots. You had pine trees that were broken in half, mm -hmm. not even from the just, yep. and you just don't see that kind of power. So uh, we went through something that was pretty, pretty bad. I don't think you got anything like that, and that's good. So we took the emergency declaration, we gave it to the governor immediately, and uh, Dan called about it also, and I appreciate that call. And uh, between the two of them, that's a great one two punch. The governor told me that himself, so I appreciate it. And FEMA has delivered 400,000 liters of water and 250,000 meals already. Uh, we've worked with the private sector to restore power to remaining 200,000 residents, and they think the power is going to be restored almost uh, in very good order. Pretty quick. I believe, yeah. I believe so. And all of the other things that we've been doing, the infrastructure, all of the 
the elements that we've been working on, and we're working very close with Ted Cruz and with John Cornyn, who I hear is doing very well, by the way. I hear he's doing, he's a great senator. He's doing a fantastic job. And, uh, and we've been working with the governor and with Dan. And uh, I think maybe it'd be good if you would uh, tell us how are we doing and what can we do and how can we help you, Governor? Sure. Uh, first, uh, I need to thank you for the way that you have stepped up. Uh, people don't know this, uh, but uh, on midnight, uh, as the storm was crossing the shoreline, you called me. Uh, and then, uh, so that was 1 a.m. your time. Uh, and then we spoke again the morning uh, after it happened. Uh, you have been there for us every step of the way, helping us. Never have I seen such a swift response to our request as we have received from Administrator Gaynor. Uh, we cannot thank you enough. Uh, I call him, and it's like he, he knows in advance I'm going to be calling him. And so he just says yes uh, immediately. And so uh, of all the storms I've been through, which, as you know, has been a lot, uh, I've never received a swifter response uh, from the administration. And so on behalf of everybody in this room and everybody across the state of Texas, we want to say, say thank you. I want to thank the local officials, Judge Gothia, in whose county we're in right now. We appreciate you and your leadership, uh, the members of Congress, uh, Becky and uh, the other mayors in the region. We appreciate everything you do. And, of course, Nim Kidd. If, if I could share some details, I know sure, you cover the details in Louisiana. Just, just real quick. Uh, I have declared a disaster in 62 counties, and the president has similarly declared a disaster in each of those counties. So on behalf of all of those 62 counties, we all say thank you, uh, Mr. President, for that. Right now, our areas of focus on, are on power, water, uh, points of distribution, safe return of evacuees, and damage assessment. On power and water restoration, peak power outages exceeded 350,000 locations across 35 counties. Uh, current outages, as of 9 a.m. this morning, are about 120,000 locations in 23 counties, meaning that emergency repair crews have quickly restored more than 250, I mean 230, uh, of those power outage incidents. Uh, for drinking water assessments, uh, 111 of 171 drinking water system uh, assessments have been completed. 84 are operational, 26 systems are under boiled water uh, notice. Uh, in addition to things like that, we have 19 points of distribution uh, set up in the impacted region uh, that are providing uh, things like water, ice, MREs, while their power and water systems are remain inoperable. Uh, there were over 10,000 evacuees that are in shelters throughout the state and approximately 3,300 hotel rooms. Uh, of the shelter residents, the Texas Division of Emergency Management under NIM Kidd is tracking more than 2,200 shelter residents who are from Louisiana. Very important is that more than 10,000 of those evacuees were in what's called non-congregate settings. What that means is they were in hotel rooms, typically. That is so important because we had to respond to Hurricane Laura while also responding to COVID-19. And the best setting for someone who's an evacuee from a hurricane is not in a large congregate setting, uh, but in separate settings to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We succeeded in getting through Hurricane Hannah without the spread of COVID-19. I believe we will succeed in getting through Hurricane Laura without spreading COVID-19. Um, a, a total of 808 residents, residents were returned on 43 buses with more, more missions scheduled for today and 160 state buses are ready to assist the ongoing repopulation efforts. Let's see, that's, a, that's about it. We continue to assess damages throughout the region. Uh, we are on top of this because of the swift and effective leadership uh, of Chief Nim Kidd, but uh, we are better capable and swifter in responding to this hurricane uh, because of the way you and your administration so swiftly stepped up and helped out the people of Texas. Good. Well, thank you very much, Governor. Doing a great job in every way. In fact, I notice your COVID, you say COVID-19, many different names, uh, at least 20 different names, right? But you, you call it COVID-19, that's okay with me, at least for today. Uh, generally, I call it something else. But you're doing very well in that. You're coming down very rapidly, Texas, and so is Florida, and so is Arizona's been incredible. It's down to 
uh, its lowest numbers. So it's really, uh, it's really doing well. So that's prior to this. And I like what you're doing with respect to keeping people separated during this problem with the hurricane. Great job. Sure. Really great job. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Ted, please. Well, Mr. President, we appreciate your being down in Texas once again. And, and, and let me say something that I just told the FEMA administrator a few minutes ago, which is that the consistent report I've gotten from the governor, I've gotten from local officials, state officials, is the responsiveness of the administration throughout this hurricane has been extraordinary. Um, in, in, in many ways, we, we had a blessing with this hurricane and that it could have been much, much worse. There, there was significant damage from this hurricane, but, but compared to what we've seen in the past, Texas could have gotten hit much worse. We, we obviously grieve that our neighbors in Louisiana took the brunt of this storm. Um, and, and just as Louisiana stepped up and, and helped Texas, particularly with Hurricane Harvey, but, but other hurricanes as well, we're now stepping up to help our, our neighbors in Louisiana who, who, who are really suffering. But one of the things that's really impressive also is just the level of coordination. Uh, you know, Mayor Ames and I were, were, were laughing about how we've got an inadvertent and unfortunate expertise right now in, in that Texas has been through some major, major disasters. And what we see consistently is, is a degree of interaction between the city officials, the county officials, the state officials, the federal officials, where you don't get bickering, you don't get... Yeah turf jockeying, you just get everyone working together, and, and as these disasters have come, you have reached out repeatedly. I still remember talking with you when Hurricane Harvey was in the Gulf, and I was in the Lucchese factory in El Paso, That's right. and, and you said then, and that was the case then and the case now, you said everything Texas needs, the federal government, the resources will be there, and, and thank you for that leadership. It's important, and, and, and it's a testament here uh, to the strength and expertise of the Texans at this table working with the federal government that, that we minimize the damage as, as, as much as possible yeah. with, it, with a very dangerous storm. Great job. Thank you very much. Dan, please. I was, uh, I was in the state senate uh, when I hit, and the difference in your response personally and the response of the administration and FEMA is a scale. They were a one, and you're a ten. The fact that you called the governor at one in the morning, your time. Well, I knew I knew he was going to be up. So uh, <laughs> you know, with him, I don't have to worry true. about that. But Dan, you need to make it an eleven, like Spinal Tap. Yes, <laughs> make it an eleven. I mean, night and day. We went years where we weren't paid by the former administration, where our counties and our cities no, I know. didn't get paid. I know. I you see know, the record. Fabulous job. Secondly, on COVID, to give you the numbers. Our, high, our highest point in the hospital was 10,883 in July. We're now under 4,800. That's great. Yeah. And in COVID and ICU, we're down almost 60% in many hospitals, 70% in some hospitals in the ICU. So the governor's leadership here and all of us Texans working together, we've really turned that corner. It's going and then I want to give the judge credit. We were here two days ago, and the judge said, look, we weren't hit as hard as some other areas, so whatever we have that <coughs> other people need, and so many Texans, we respect the Cajun Navy that came for us. We don't have a name for our volunteers, the Texas Brigade, the Texas Volunteers, whatever you want to call them. But I've seen on all the newscasts, thousands of Texans have gone over to Louisiana. And that's the spirit of Americans Great. working together. So, Judge, thank you for, for right away you said, hey, we want to help everyone else. So thank yeah. you, Mr. President. Good job, Judge. We absolutely You've been here good. so many times for us. Yeah. So many, thank thank you, you very for much, Dan. I appreciate it. Ken, please. So, Mr. President, I did not grow up in Texas. My dad was an Air Force pilot, grew up all over. But one of the things I love about Texas is we get stuff done. And you fit the culture of Texas because you get stuff done. So thank you because you truly have accelerated the pace of, of getting relief to our state like nobody else. So thank you. And this governor has been exceptional at dealing with disasters like literally no governor I've ever seen. So I want to give you credit as well. So that's all I wanted to say is thank you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. Brian? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for being here, Mr. President. It's, uh, it's an honor for, to have you in our district, and I uh, can't thank you and your administration enough for the rapid response. Uh, we're still actually cleaning up after Imelda and after Harvey and uh, other, uh, uh, other storms that have hit us, and uh, your administration has been absolutely on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the money. 
And I'd also like to, uh, he's not here today, but I want to I want to brag a little bit on an orange mayor uh, who is not here. Right. That's Larry Spears. Uh, he's, he's done a tremendous job uh, uh, in his mayor. I'm a, I'm a former mayor myself, so I, I appreciate uh, <laughs> Mayor Spears and what he does. But, uh, Mr. President, uh, your, uh, your administration uh, is, uh, we're not supposed to get political here, and I, I realize that, but uh, it has been like night and day uh, from what we've seen in, in the past. And I just want to say thank, thank you, you much, for what you're doing. Appreciate it. Okay. And say hello to the mayor. He'll be fine. I know. I, I just will. tell him to get well. I also want to say one quick thing uh, for Chad Wolf. I met your daddy yesterday. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you, you did you grow up in, in Orange at all? I did not. I grew up okay. uh, north of Dallas. That's right. He told me that. But anyway, you, you He's right back there. He's up there. Right oh, yeah. There he is. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, we've been having, having oh, you, You're checking him out, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's very good. So should that's we have good. asked him if Chad's good? I prefer? think yeah. Yeah. He, know, he knows more. First right? witness. That's good. He's doing a great job. Thank anyway, you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Yes, sir. Randy, please. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for being here. Of course, this is Dr. Babbin's district. I'm probably the oldest guy in the room in that I grew up on the Gulf Coast, never left. I've probably been through more hurricanes than anybody here, starting in 61 with Hurricane Carla. Uh, I was going into the Texas House uh, in 2008 when Ike hit, and I've never, never seen this kind of responsiveness from the federal government. It is a tenement to your leadership, Mr. President. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And our great state people are here too, our great governor, uh, NIM kid, uh, Lieutenant Governor, Attorney General, I could go right down the list. Uh, and you have done everything you said you would do for Texas and more. And my district loves you and we appreciate you. Thank you, Randy, very Thank much. You. You're doing a great job. Chief, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to I want to thank the local officials. In Texas, mayors and county judges are the only ones with the authority to mandate an evacuation, and that's a courageous decision to make. Right. And Mayor Spears, Judge, for the work that you did, that saved lives. The reason we have the low death count that we have is because you took the evacuation orders in this storm and took them seriously, so thank you for doing that. To my governor and the state elected leaders here, thanks for giving us the authority and the funding to go do good work. We try really hard at that. But from our regional administrator, Tony Robinson, to Administrator Gaynor, to Secretary Wolf, thank you for the dedicated leadership. Mr. President, we've never had this quick of answers. I've been in this seat for 10 years. I think 17 or 18 major disaster declarations and about 300 <coughs> FMAGs later, we've never had this fast of a response. So thank you for that. Right, thank you very much. A very important state, a great state, and uh, got to take care of the people of Texas. Yes, sir. That's all there is to it. Becky, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I echo everything that's been said here. Um, it's been unbelievable. I was elected mayor in 2007, and four months later we had Umberto, and then shortly after <laughs> Ike, and I went through Harvey and Imelda. Uh, we have had uh, 26 federal declarations since 1953, and 19 of them have been <laughs> since I was elected mayor in 07. So um, I've gotten to know all of the people at this table very, very well, and the local officials work very close together, and with the state and Governor Abbott and our Senate and our Congress have been just unbelievable, and um, I just thank you for coming. It means a lot to us, and it means a lot to the people who live here to well, see that our president would take the time to come and say hello to us. So thank you very much. We appreciate You're doing a great job. Thank, thank you, Becky, very thank much. You so much. Judge, I want to thank you very much. I hear just uh, the job you do is incredible. And I can see the passion you have for it, too. So it's uh, really great. We appreciate it. Well, thank you. I, you know, it's uh, fantastic. I, I, I cannot tell you how much we appreciate you coming. And uh, the governor's been here multiple times. And uh, everybody involved, you know, we have a great concern for our community. We have a great concern for Texas. We have a great concern for Louisiana. And we're going to do what we can do to help them. Uh, but a couple people for sure that, and I hate to single people out, but for sure, Chief Kidd, thank you. And the response that you and the governor's office has had in answering the phone calls, because there's been many all the way through COVID down to this. I'm kind of like Mayor Becky Ames. I've been in office four years. This is six, disaster number six for me. So it's, uh, we, you know, we're getting good at something we really don't want to be good at, but we're going to be good at it and we're going to get it taken care of. Uh, but when we come to one of the biggest things we're looking at now, other than the storm itself, was what was caused by that, and that was some of our uh, 
getting our energy back up and getting our power back up. And we have someone in the building today who is, uh, uh, who is the president and CEO of Entergy Texas and their team, uh, Sally Rayner, and she, their team is in here in force uh, and getting this power and stuff restored as quickly as possible so that our citizens that are on their way home can have power as quickly as possible right. to get back to re repairing their homes. And so there's so many people that, that do so much for Texas. Uh, you know, uh, one of the big projects we have, and I want to recognize uh, General Beck with the Army Corps of Engineers. We've been working for a project. I know the governor and, and Senator Cruz, Senator Corn is not here, but everybody's involved with it, which is the Coastal Spine Levy Project, 26 miles of that, which that will going? be, uh, well, it's made huge progress in the last three weeks. The state uh, and the general land office has, has helped fund Orange County share. Uh, of that uh, portion of it and because of that we're able to move forward with the core and uh, when you're working at the next legislative session to continue that in the deal but that is huge for us. Do you think it'll work? Yeah, it's, it's, the Army Corps. it's absolutely they gonna to work. They to be building our wall just so yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're doing a very good job. Yeah. 10 well, miles a day we're up to 300 miles it's going good. Uh, how is that working? Or are you asking the wall? No, the wall I know. The wall is good. <laughs> <laughs> the levy. So that's another one. Call it the levy. Uh, sir, so within Orange, we're excited. As the judge said, we have the ability now with the, with this. We're moving forward with design. Uh, it'll end up with about 25 miles of wall, different types of wall. It'll also end up with about seven pump stations and about 30 gates. So that'll stop the water from pouring in? Sir, we're confident that it will. And, and also, not only in Orange, but with two neighboring communities in Port Arthur and Freeport, it's going to create a system. We, we, those two communities have walls. Uh, we're going to continue to develop and, and improve those walls. And collectively, those three projects are going to improve the protection on over 100,000 residences in this community, critical infrastructure, and also critical energy sector infrastructure. And, and sir, they're, they're, what is your timing on that? Sir, we're starting the design uh, right now with Orange. Uh, right now, we're looking at all three of those projects being complete between 25 and 20, 2025 and 2027. Uh, so we're moving forward, and what makes them impressive, and the judge is, is a great partner in this, is we're doing this with the local communities. We're doing this with the state. Uh, this is a partnership from top to bottom, allowing us to develop something that not only will withstand, as you said, the storms, but also allow the communities to take care of these projects and the residents behind them in the future. What do you think the cost will be of the, the so entire right now, uh, with the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018, we got $4 billion uh, to move these three projects forward. Uh, so we have that funding in hand and are moving forward. Uh, also, as part of that act, we received additional funds to study the remainder of the Gulf Coast. So we're working hard. Uh, we've got a study that we're going to publish an interim report on in the near future, within the next month. Uh, it looks at Houston, it looks at Galveston, it looks at Bolivar Peninsula. Is that part to, of the original approval, Houston? Sir, that is part of the, when we got the Bipartisan Budget Act, that, was, that study was part of that. Good. Okay, good. So, Mr. President, what Congress You know, the governor, Ted, called me. He said, could you do me a favor? Just one more favor. That's all I want. It's very small. I said, how much, governor? <laughs> he said, it's not much. $10 billion. I said, $10 billion. But he said that would really do something with respect to this tremendous flooding every time you have a hurricane. And Absolutely. So your phase one, really, phase one is what we're talking about. But you could do something, and uh, that'll also take care of the Houston area. Right. So Congress has already directed $3.8 billion, and that was with strong bipartisan support and Good. your support. Yeah. And yeah. so that's constructing, beginning construction of the coastal spine, but we're also studying the continued expansion to complete it. And, and obviously a lot, of, a lot of families and homes and a lot of businesses and energy infrastructure is all along the Gulf Coast. And it well. will work, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> we're not going to build it and we're going to say, oops, it sprung a leak, and that's the end of that. It's a big, it's a big project. but. It will work, right? Yes, sir. Okay. If you guys do it, it's Mr. going to work. Mr. President, Mr. President we're uh, very excited. law enforcement down on the other side, uh, and you've done a fantastic job. Do you have anything to say? Yes, sir. I would like to, uh, Mr. President. I uh, appreciate you being here. My community appreciates it. Thank you for what you do for our country. We thank really you. appreciate that. I also want to thank uh, Judge John Gauthier and somebody we didn't mention, Joel Ardois. He's our uh, uh, emergency management coordinator. They've done an outstanding job and we appreciate the work they've done. I also want to thank everyone in this room that has uh, helped us here in the community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Well, uh, Greg, you want to finish it off? One thing that Texans have shown, whether it be Harvey, whether it be uh, all these other storms you've heard, uh, they have been through it, and it shows the resilience and perseverance that Texans have. But we are made even stronger uh, by the swift and profound and effective support 
that we get from our leaders in Washington, D.C. You are the builder president. You are helping to build uh, that coastal spine that will protect Texas, but you are right now helping Texas rebuild in the aftermath of this hurricane, and we say thank you. It's my honor. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions for the governor, the senator, or anybody? Anybody for, have any for questions? The governor, uh, governor, uh, what is the status uh, in Galveston, Galveston Bay with the refineries and the hundreds of chemical plants? If you could share uh, just a, an update on the economic sure. and environmental impact. Just real, real quick. So the, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality uh, continues to monitor those both with regard to air quality uh, and water quality. They have mobile units engaged to make sure they're going to be able to adequately go to all the impacted areas uh, and do the monitoring uh, and make sure that if there is any type of environmental situation, it will be swiftly contained. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. President, I have a question. Uh, this is obviously an important trip um, to visit these communities. Do you plan to visit uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin as well, another community that's uh, obviously in pain? Uh, probably so. Uh, we've had tremendous success. As you know, uh, we were finally able to get the go-ahead from the local authorities to send in the National Guard. We sent in the National Guard, and within a few minutes of the Guard, everybody cleared out, and it became safe. We have uh, — that was three days ago. We've had absolutely no problem from that. We sent in a 1,000 National Guard. And uh, that's not even a big force. We could clean out, as an example, Portland. We could fix Portland in, I would say, 45 minutes. And the people in Portland should protest because the mayor doesn't know what he's doing. He has no clue. He doesn't even have a clue. And uh, this has been going on for years in Portland, and it's now been going on 94 days. And if he would call or if they would ask or if the governor would ask, we would have uh, — we would have the — National Guard are there in a very short period of time, and that would be cleaned out in a matter of literally minutes, and you'd have a safe Portland. It's ridiculous that they go on like this. So uh, with Kenosha, it's been in very, very good shape. From the moment they set foot in that area, uh, the sheriff's been great, the police commissioner, the police chief has been great. We've been working with all of them, but uh, the governor let us do what we had to do, and we cleaned it out. We'll see what happens. We have to keep it going. But it's uh, — we won't have any problem. Can I follow up, sir, with one thing on that? I think yesterday you did comment on the uh, killing of uh, Jacob Blake. You said you didn't like the, how it looked. I, I wondered if you it. could comment about the uh, the other shooting that took place in that community. Yeah, I see. You it. mentioned the National Guard going in, yeah. law enforcement. But this, this was a young man, 17-year-old, who's facing murder charges for having shot two people. Yeah. Uh, there's some folks who've said — uh, conservatives are holding up this young man as, you know, ha having done so within his rights um, to sort of self-protect. And I'm wondering if you've read much about this case, if you have concerns about uh, ordinary residents uh, with guns in situations like this and what uh, dangers that might present. Well, you know, that's under investigation right now, and they'll be reporting back to me over the next 24 hours, 48 hours maybe max, and we'll have a comment about it. But uh, that is right now we're being — we're looking at it very, very carefully. Uh, what we are doing with uh, — it's a great state, Wisconsin, great state, and they should not have to put up with what they went through. And so the National Guard has done a fantastic job. Any other Mr. questions? Mr. President, why are um, — why is the DNI no longer going to be updating the House and the Senate on election security issues in person? Well, I could have Mark answer that question, Mark, please. Yeah, I'll be glad to answer it. I talked to Director Ratcliffe, and uh, as you know, he's been giving briefings. So he's going to uh, ultimately give uh, uh, full briefings in terms of uh, not oral briefings, but full intel briefings. But it really comes down to one simple thing. The last time they gave briefings, uh, a few members went out and talked to the press and disclosed information that they shouldn't have disclosed. And so he's going to make sure that there's uh, the proper tools for their oversight and make sure that they contain it in a way that does not jeopardize sources and methods for the intel that we gather. Mr. President. Director Radcliffe uh, brought information into the committee, and the information leaked. Whether it was Shifty Schiff or somebody else, uh, they leak the information before it gets in. And what's even worse, they leak the wrong information. And he got tired of it. So he wants to do it in a different form, because you have leakers on the committee, uh, obviously uh, leakers that are doing bad things, probably not even legal to leak, 
but we'll look into that separately. But they were leaking the information as brought in. How would you, you don't have that in Texas. Ken, you wouldn't allow that in Texas. No way. I guarantee <laughs> Ken will not be allowing the leakers to no be way. doing that. So we were, uh, he wanted to make sure that it doesn't leak. Yeah, please. Mr. President, one uh, question about Laura. So in, in June of this year, NOAA issued a report indicating that climate change is at least in part responsible for increasing sea temperatures, which then in turn lead to storms like Laura and Harvey. In an area where petrochemicals and the energy industry are so critical, how do you balance that with at the same time attacking climate change so that storms yeah. like this don't continue to ravage, ravage the Gulf Coast? Well, I tell you, you've had tremendous storms in Texas for many decades and for many centuries, and that's the way it is. It's, we handle them as they come. All I can do is handle them as they come, and that's what we do, and nobody's ever done a better job of it. And we love the people of Texas. And, Governor, it's an honor to be with you. Thank you very much, Ted. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you, Dan. Please. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much, everybody. Thank you.